Welcome back to uh, Undying Winds. This is session number nine, titled Bad Choices. Last session, um, the group um, elected to kind of split off a bit. We had a couple players who uh, were missing, so sidetrack based, based on uh, their character's good spirits. They wanted to help the um, people who were being used as uh, basically milking subjects for uh, a drug known as liquid pain um, out. Um, and they ascended the um, chute um, up to a place where people were kind of being held in very strange um, uh, glass chambers after a fight with a number of the uh, conglomerate agents up there. They uh, were able to free most of the people there. One of those individuals assisted them in their fight. Um, Broxgar, um, to help that individual fight better uh, against the agents they were dealing with, uh, handed over the only weapon he had to spare, um, and that was Asafune, and it kind of granted itself to him. Um, and during the course of the fight, uh, Broxgar thinks he noticed that the blade's uh, length uh, has grown um, in size. It seems the crystal has actually extended itself uh, to a longer, um, almost great sword. Uh, length uh, compared to its former longsword length when it was wielded by Sayer. Um, they uh, descended down, and when they arrived back down, I'm going to go ahead and say that um, new guy um, is remaining upstairs with the uh, people who um, were uh, brought up there. Um, after they've gotten everyone up, they've descended back down, and Valette, um, uh, Ren, and Sam. Um, return, Broxgar. Um, I know, I was with, I was yeah, with Brock. Stri strike that, reverse it. Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert and the others, Gilbert, Valette, Sam, um, arrive back. Um, but noticeably missing is Yen Lauren. I'll be, uh, um, Kevin for this portion. I'll do my best for you, Romano. I can't believe we actually all made it out of there. What the hell happened? Where's Jen Lauren? I'm sure he's fine. He was invisible. He got out. Hopefully he can meet up with us soon. I'm sure he'll be fine. After s some incidences, we ended up running into a conservator. How did, uh, how did, how did what you guys were doing go? Says Gilbert. I'm fine. Uh, save the best people, you know. Is everyone? Did you get everyone out? Are they okay? We ran into a little trouble, and one of the people that we saved actually helped helped us out. Does anybody Hold on a to... I'd like to point out that Gilbert's concerned about other people. I feel like this is a huge step for him. Is you gotta any... recognize that. Is anybody wounded? Um, I don't think any of us are wounded, right, John? Out of well, no, no. I mean, like the people, the NPCs that I'm going to go hang out with. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. We we could really use your help, Gilbert, in going to uh, heal some of those people. They've been through the shit. Okay. Starts climbing up the rope, leaving right. you guys to your conversation. Yeah, sure. I'm just sitting here at like. A quarter of health. Oh, do you need healing? Bye. Do you need healing? A little healing wouldn't hurt. I oh. could use a top off. Uh, let's see what we got here. I'm missing 20 health thereabouts. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm I'll, missing I'll, 20 health, which is like a third of my health. I, I don't mind chucking uh, chucking some hit points your guys' way. Uh, is what I would totally. Say. That's what I would say. Yeah. Um, I've got. Let's see. I got two third uh, or one third level. Okay, let me give you uh, first level cure wounds, uh, Sam, because you don't have a lot of hit points. How, how does that do for you? Did it click? Did it go? It, it did not go through. What was it total? No. Did it go? Not yet. Okay. Well, let me tell you what I'm going. Um. Oh, hold on. I see why. I hold on a second. I'm lagging because I still left my Photoshop up. Six hit points for you, Sam. Oh, that's right. It's a, yeah. 
You good? Yeah, sure, that'll work for now. I mean, I can give you another one. Not sure. You're not here, so yeah. Okay. I'll okay, give you bro. another first level one, so you'll get eight back. Cool. And then, Bilet, how bad are you off? Missing 22. I'll go ahead and give you one first or second level uh, of cure wounds. Your wounds, second level. So that'll be 15 for you. Alright. And then the little gnome climbs his way on up the, the chute. Yeah. Alright. Bye, Gilbert. It's nice to see you care about other people. Yeah! It's so out of character for me. Not really. He's been a pretty good guy. But anyways, leaving you guys to discuss what happened. So anyway, these bugbears came out of nowhere. Bugbears. Bugbears. Critical role reference. So he's still not back yet. I'm concerned. We did run into a conservator. So there was just one enemy there? No, there were four of those... Things. The slimy ones in the suits. Yeah, the four suits... And then, uh, John, would you say that was like an, uh, the other dude was like an enforcer or like normal guards guy? Your call. Conglomerate. What would I have recognized his robing as? There was a conser uh, conservator, yeah. No, 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 not the conservator, the other dude. That was the guards person that was walking by that set off the alarm. S several agents. Okay. There were several agents, uh, in the area, at least four suits and the conservator showed up who... Seem to promptly dispel. You hear a loud thunderclap come from the main hall um, in the other chamber. Then you hear a voice that booms out. Surrender yourselves, interlopers, renegades. This can continue without further incident. If you surrender yourself, you will be granted clemency and leniency. Otherwise, we will put you to the sword. It's we need woman. to go now. It's a woman's voice, but it's a very stern woman uh, that's uh, basically yelling out over. Um, Valette, make an intelligence check. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of citrus fruit, so, like, clementines don't sound that great. 20! You recognize the voice. Shit. Enforcer 99. She's the sword teacher for all agent fencers and all agent bladesmen who... Um, work as patrols. Every single fencer you fought in this place, this is probably the woman who trained them. She probably okay. taught you quite a bit about how to use a sword as well. Yeah. Uh, that would be Enforcer 99. Did you say 99? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. She taught me how to use the blade. Let's book it. We know you're in there. Surrender yourselves. There's no escape. Do we know which direction that's coming from? It's coming from the main chamber. So that would be uh, kind of the chamber where all of the people were kind of locked up. Okay. And so there's a chamber to the north on the west-hand side that's that's separate? Correct. Or, but are okay. you... And you also know that this way, kind of to the southwest, there's a ladder that heads down somewhere, but you haven't gone down that ladder. There's also the chute that you can climb back up. Not a quick process at all. And if they have any kind of range weaponry, they'll be able to basically take absolute um, pot shots at your back ends as you're trying mm -hmm. to ascend. Um, Valette, is the door open and are you watching out the door? Uh, sure, we'll say I'm doing that. You see an agent move past into the hallway, look down the hallway, and then post up against the wall. You see that he's got a crossbow in his hand, swords at his belt, looks like a typical agent. You also notice that the crossbow is loaded with one of the detonating uh, bolts. Hold the door. I hold the door, and is there any way we can try and keep this? There's some chests or beds in here, aren't there? Does the door open out or in, John? Uh, if you recall, the door opens inwards. Inwards? Okay. Uh, yes, if we can move that chest over, anything to help barricade the store. I say we go the ladder. You have 30 seconds. Ladder. Surrender. Or die. Ren starts climbing the ladder. You mean the, the rope? 
The rope, yeah, whatever that is. Upwards, right? Again, that's not a quick process. Really? Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to start going down the stairs. I thought you said the chute was not a quick process. The ladder is over here. I'm going over whichever one's the quickest one. It's yeah, like, that, that's fine. Whatever's quickest. So, yeah, the uh, ladder's over to the. It, it's it's a ways away. You guys have not utilized it at all. That's fine. I, I thought you meant that the chute was was not. No, quick, in the so, room that uh, you are in, the only exits are the chute and the door you entered in. Wait, chutes and ladders. Yeah, John, I, really? I was, I, it took you this long to get it, but yeah. Come exactly on. Right. So, okay, let's book. So, so, John, the guy I saw post up, is that in the direction of the ladder? Yes. Okay. The ladder would be I'm this gonna, way. I'm yeah, going to qu quickly throw some caltrops right in the foot of the door but, uh, outside of the chest that's blocking it. Draw a square. Is that where the door is? The let's the standing in front of the door. Okay. She closed it, am I right? Tim? Yeah, so... What's that? Did you close the door? Uh, I closed the door when I saw him with the detonator. Okay. So you would start hearing voices coming from the other side, a lot of yelling, one of them a lot louder than the others, but the language has changed. They're now speaking in Draconic. Um, hey, I know what they're saying. Okay. You're a ways away from the door. If you're standing next to the door and are listening out, you can hear what they're saying. Nope. Well, that, you not do not speak thing. draconic, correct? Okay. So it sounds like a lot of just guttural, kind of just uh, very um, harsh kind of language being spoken. Uh, the tongue of dragons. Who's wrote that? Is right. it typical yeah. for enforcers to speak draconic? You're not sure. Okay. Uh, poor thing. She sounds so sick. Um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Let's let's so I throw those caltrops in the square where I mark behind them Valette. And let's go down. Okay. Yeah, behind Valette. So you can move triple move through it to get out uh, without taking any damage. Valette. All right. Can someone explain what are we doing? Because I don't. Right now it seems like we're we're deciding to hold ourselves up in a very small room. No, we're running. Get... Yeah, where? we're going to the ladder to get out. The ladder. The ladder is the ladder's is out the door. door. The ladder is over here, past the guards. Correct. The chute, you, which is going to take a very long time to climb, is in this room. The, I thought there was another... Oh. No. Real quick, let me explain again. The room that you're in has two exits. There's the chute that's over the bed, okay? That's got a rope ladder set up that Ren and Broxgard took time to set up. But even with that, it's still a 45-degree angle, completely slick, like a slide, and it goes up for... Uh, hundreds of feet at the top of that ladder is a very large chamber okay um, and the chamber has a lot of these glass containers that have been broken open and they have a lot of refugee people none of them are aim able-bodied individuals with the exception of one that's zach's character okay and you would also have noted broxcar specifically that the room's top has a metal door that's very similar to the what you would presume to be the bottom of the metal door in the very first building you started off in. Remember that metal door you couldn't open because you couldn't find the mechanism? That door's bottom is basically that door goes down into this very large chamber where people are kept in effectively stasis, a magic stasis. And there were about seven agents in here and you've killed them all. With the the first three were stealth kill, like awesome, cool Metal Gear Solid mode, and then the next four kind of had the alarm raised when you were started letting these people out, and Brack was able to assist you in dealing with those. So, anyways, you know it's going to take you a good if if you climb as well as you did uh, when you weren't controlling your characters, it'll take you a good twenty minutes to get up that ladder or get up that shoot rather. Let me use the right terminology. The okay, ladder, so that's the one. The ladder is outside the door. The door you came in is the other exit. If you go straight out the door to the east and then kind of divot off to the south a little bit, there's another door. Inside of that door is a ladder. Nobody went down it. You just noted it. And that was one of the options that was given to you at the beginning of last session. But, Ren, Andy, you weren't here uh, for that okay, first decision. Okay, okay. The... When you come out of the doorway, immediately to the left is another uh, hallway, 
and that leads into the very large chamber. And it sounds like that's where they're coming from, but you also know that there's a passageway that leads south from the entrance of that main chamber, and that connects to where that guy is posted up, straight out the hallway. So that said, I'm going to now count to 30 in my head, and if you guys don't come up with a plan or determination, it's go time. Okay, so we're going to ret... ret I was going to say, I have hold person who want me to try to hold whoever's out there, and then we run somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to retcon the Caltrops thing, because I didn't fully understand. I yes. think we need to... Sam's idea. That's Sam's good. Idea. Breaking out. Sam's idea. Okay. That's the plan. Well, I'm trying to hold the person up there. Let's, and go to the ladder. Like it. Bilette, you're at the door. Sam, you're behind Ren. Brox, you're in the far back, or are you closer to the front? I'm in the far back, ready to flip the table over. And duck. Okay. They wouldn't have been able to give you enough time to put on the boots that they might want to try to give you eventually, but we'll talk about that later, obviously. Boots, question. Uh, I'm assuming boot. for now, Valette still has them because right. we haven't had a chance to figure that and out. And you haven't had time to attune to them either. <sighs> it's another note. Um, Valette same. or Brox? Everyone. No one's had time to attune to any of those items. Yeah, we haven't had time. I have not attuned oh, yet to okay. my ring yet either. Right. One day. So I only have 20 feet of movement. This will be good. Correct. Okay. So, Valette, you're at the door. You're ready to open it and make ready for everyone to take actions afterwards. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to fling the door open, and I'm going to post up uh, in this hallway with my shield, with Brox's shield out to try all the fire. So I'm going to be more out. than fair and say that's only taken about 10 seconds. So, what I'm going to ask you here is, do you want to wait another 10 seconds or another 10 seconds, or do you want to go right now? Now. Right now. Okay. Take the dodge action, open up like the. I'm gonna move everyone to where they were or where they would be after the doors opened, which is exactly where everyone's located. You move to that position. The second you open the door, my ready to action goes off. Okay. Crossbow shot down the barrel. So you're so gonna be the one the that I hit still. because I cannot get through you. Um, okay. You'll be able to step out, I think. So you'll be okay. kind of there. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Sounds and good. It, because of that forward momentum you'll be able to block it from getting past you. So it's just going to be you taking the damage if you get hit. Awesome. Which you do. And make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the damage is coming, the shot is coming from the south nine. or from the, from the east? From the east. Okay. Um, nine. Okay, so you're going to be taking... Damn. Not too bad. 13 points of fire damage from the detonation. And just 13? Yeah. Cool, cool. And um, basically, you guys watch as the door opens, Valette charges through, and then you see her blonde hair kind of flare back and kind of her coat kind of buffle out too as fire kind of whips past it and this heat kind of enters into the room, but it doesn't seem to like... It's not like... It's just a bit of heat, like opening the oven kind of heat, not standing in the oven like she did. Um, that's my ready to action. That's your action. Sam, you had it ready to action. The only target you can see at current would be the one that just fired the arrow. Yeah, that's who I'm casting whole person on, DC 15. Okay. He shoots the arrow, drops the crossbow, pulls out a bolt, and kind of pulls it up like this. And as he's getting ready to drop it in, you see him just kind of drop the bolt and kind of just stand there. Like, just kind of bobbing in space. Yeah, and Sam just sort of like, go, 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 go. All right, and uh, Ren, you would have had a ready action as well. Take it. Oh. So I was going to run past Valette, and then we're going down the corridor with the ladder. Yes? Is that right? That's the plan. So whichever one that is, John. Yeah, that would be the way that, yeah, to the east and then to the south, and you should see a door there. And if you would do me a favor and just make me a good old-fashioned wisdom perception check. Sure. Thanks. Ten. Never mind. Um, I see fifteen people standing in the room with a ladder. So the door to the north there. I need to get rid of it. Hold on a second. So this door to the south, right? This door here that I'm just now opening that leads to the um, what I was telling you about. Oh, okay. 15, 15, and then the door. I to still the, have. There's a door to the north of you, and it appears that there are two more of the agents that have already opened that door, and the one that's posted up. That's where he kind of moved to. These ones do not have crossbows drawn. They instead have dagger and sword. 
I can get through the door um, uh, and close it behind me uh, in my movement. Is that your goal? Yeah, actually, I'm going to get behind the door and sort of man it so that when I see some of the some of my friends coming, I could open it for them. Is that okay. possible? You took to you dash as a bonus action, right? Yep. Since you're attempting to kind of gate guard the door, I'm going to say that's your action. Uh, so if someone who's not your friends kind of moves up to it, you're closing it and holding it. And if someone that is your friends is moving towards you, you're holding it open. Is that accurate? That's it. That's exactly right. That's your action. And yes. if it comes to a contested time, you'll be able to make an athletics check to try and resist me forcing the door open. Okay, perfect. And then, uh, Broskar, last but not least, you would have a readied action as well. Go ahead and take it. If you wanted to dash, you can bolt through, whatever. Shoot something. I'm going to dash. Okay. So, 50 feet. And yeah, the, oh, held, holy shit. the held guy will... Um, uh, if you do attack him eventually, obviously not now, um, he's currently held, so you'd have advantage on your attack rolls against him. All right, Sam, Valette, everybody's gone. Now we go into Initiative Town. Yeah, Andy is on the ladder. Andy has no. entered into the door where the ladder is. Yeah. Right. It's right. kind of like a hallway. Still about 15 feet away. Why am I the only one left in the room? Run, Forrest, run! Nice, Joe. I'm so fast. You might as well uh, kill off that guy that's paralyzed. <laughs> auto crits, man, auto crits. He'll be dead in one, one or two shots. No, he's just held. He's not paralyzed. I don't think I thought did. that's what hold piston they're paralyzed for the duration. Is it? Yeah, oh, hold person's nasty. Zach yeah, will... they're paralyzed yeah. or be paralyzed for the duration. Okay. So yeah, that's accurate. Uh, they do get a saving throw at the end of their turn, I think. Right. Yeah. Alright, Broxgar, you're first. Um Yeah, twenty seven real high. Um on 27 initiative what would you like to do the door is currently being held open uh ren's kind of holding the door open like gesturing for you to get in um and it looks like he's kind of on the ready to close the door if someone else tries to do it besides you yeah just to say with paralyzed it's only critical if you're within five feet of the enemy so uh, melee. melee attacks yep this uh, uh go ahead Hold, I mean, I'm going to say to Andy, hold the door, hold the door open, usher the others in. Uh, there's more coming down the hallway. I'm going to hold them off. Hold door, hold door. Hold the door. You got it. Hold door. Hold door. Let's go, boy. All right. I'm going to swing. Fury. That's from Lord of the Rings, right? Ah. Uh -huh. yes. Lord of the Rings. The three uh, 11 will miss, yeah. And then a 20 to hit on the second one. Okay. Were you wanting to go against the paralyzed guy, or are you trying to block those dudes? Trying to block the... Okay. Block the, the... 20 works. Nine damage. All right. And add it. Um, okay. Follette. Uh... I, I can't wait... If we're trying to rush this, I can't wait because I'm really slow right now. Three, four. Uh, dash. And he's paralyzed, so he can't do anything. Correct. All right. Uh, that's my turn. All right. On 15, you hear a very familiar sounding... Uh, uh, swing of a sword it kind of creates kind of like a crystal like sound as she enters into the hallway looks at you as you pass by and then looks to the door have you left anyone behind <laughs> smirking down the hall you see enforcer or agent uh, 99 step into the hall it looks like she's readying her action all right um on 13 uh, Ren you're up 
Uh, Ren. <laughs> ah! uh, I'm going to ready an action to attack anything that comes near the door. Okay. On um, uh, 13 as well, but lower than 18 dexterity. You see one of the uh, agents that was uh, along with um, Agent 99 uh, enter into the room where Sam is and move adjacent to him. Sam, you watch as this individual comes in, dagger and sword uh, out, and uh, kind of goes, eh, little renegade, <laughs> and starts going to work. Dimension door, Sam? Maybe? I don't have dimension door. That's... Damn it. Also, that would not be a reaction. All right. So um, 18 uh, with a dagger and then rapier. Wow. Wow, that's depressing. Uh, okay. Um, a uh, Depressing for me or depressing for you? A 13 and a critical fumble. I'm okay with that. Yeah, but the first one hits, so it takes seven points of piercing damage. He comes in with a dagger and hits you. Um, as you kind of get knocked, you kind of duck down a bit, he raises the rapier up to kind of come down with like a wide scratch and hits against the brazier above you um, and kind of backs away and then tries to stab with the rapier, but he bent it a bit and it kind of like just bounces off of your cloak. All right. And then this enforcer, or I'm sorry, this agent rather, will come in. This one is loaded with crossbow and will point the barrel down straight at... Uh, Bullet. And uh, the crossbow bolt sinks into uh, your chest plating. Uh, you're taking seven points of piercing damage. No explosion. Bullet. Sam, you're up. Engage and okay. run. Can I move to this square here? Like past the guy? Yeah, I'll allow it. Okay, I'm going to move there. She'll take her ready to action. To... Actually, yeah, she'll take her ready to action. So I mean, not... I literally couldn't see anything out of the hallway, so... Understandable. Alright. I need you to make a strength saving throw. Okay, well, I failed that. Okay. You're going to take... With, uh, oh, a 17. Actually, I might have succeeded. Uh, DC is 15, uh, 14, so yeah. So you're going to take hey. uh, four points of bludgeoning damage. Um, she drops down low when you see her, and just like this wisp of brown hair kind of flutters about in like a whirlwind, and her foot kind of slams against your leg. Uh, once she hits there, she stops, spins around again with the other foot, uh, trying to knock you off of your footing. Another, another strength saving throw from you. That's a one. Unless yeah. someone wants to give me advantage and I can have a 20. Inspiration? Anyone? Anyone? I don't have it. I will give it. Okay. Woo! 20. All right. So you're taking uh, five points of bludgeoning damage from this kick. Um, once she kind of realizes your footing is pretty sturdy, she kind of pops back up with a straight word upward cut. Uh, the sword kind of sings as it graces... Uh, at you. Okay, uh, I thought a ready attack was only one attack action. Oh yeah, we did this in the past. Except that. Yeah, that's why I'm confused. No, wait, 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 wait. I'm getting beat the shit up right now when, wait, when we discussed wait, 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 wait. We did discuss this last session. I wonder how it works with multi-attack, though. Multi-attack might just be a singular action. Hold on a second. Ex extra attack, you'd only get the one attack because it's on your turn. Yeah, but pack. that's one of the things that I'm wondering because that feels unbalanced for the players that if they can only attack once for a ready to action, but a enemy can attack multiple times for a ready to action. Checking. That, I agree. Yeah, that seems very unbalanced for action economy, in my mind. I, it might be that that's the case. I don't know. I just I want a ruling on this one. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so um, it can only use multi-attack on its own turn. That's accurate. So just take the first four damage, not the second five. Awesome. 
And Ren would still have inspiration. Correct. Yeah, Ren would still have okay, inspiration because okay. I didn't need that. So basically then Sam just flips her the birds. Mm-hmm. And for a bonus action, I'm casting Misty Step, bitch. Hold on a second. Are you seriously going to try to counterspell me right now? No, no, no. She can't counterspell. Okay, good. Thank you. Because if, if you did that, I would be so sad right now. <laughs> the other person that's in line of sight of you does. Ah, so we do have to go back for one other thing. I apologize. Again, I hate to be the guy because we went back for that ruling, but I did forget. She no, does have a, She has a feature called Martial Advantage that says if she's attacking somebody that an ally is adjacent to and you are in a flank, she deals an extra 46 damage. So you should be taking from the kick an additional 14 points. Apologies. That's fine. And then I'll, I'll take, I have I'll nothing on you for Missy Step. Go to town. Teleport away. Okay, so bonus action, Misty Step, and then I just run and dash for my movement and my action to wherever the step oh, ladder is. One last thing, sorry, 14 plus 4 is 18, half of which would be 9, which is less than 10. I need a concentration saving throw for the hold. Oh no. That's fine. Give which, me one second. I, I failed the saving throw on the agent's turn, so I just want to see if I can't get a... Get out of jail. Get out of the hole. Well, okay, you're good. You did it. Go nuts. It's a 23. I was giving you inst inspiration anyway, Matt. It doesn't matter. It's a 23 automatically. I, yeah. I tried everything I could. <laughs> so you can get through the... I, so I open the door for him and move back one. Okay, that's fine. You can... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm moving through. Is your action where, dash? Right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm just... I'm missing the bonus action and just dash the fuck down the ladder. Okay. I, I took you, me like... You're going in? You're going down the ladder? That was the plan of what we were doing, right? We're going down the ladder? Okay. You just pick, you're going by yourself, though. You just might want to hold. So Let me know. You. No, Sam's just going to start going down the ladder. Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. I got some work to do. I just want to make sure that um, the others get through before I start going myself. How that, much? That's how, perfectly fair. Just Sam's being selfish and he's just getting. You don't get want to get yourself into some shit then. How much movement would you have had uh, at the top of the ladder? Hold on a second. Let me calculate. I can't see where the ladder is right now because for some reason it's acting strange for me. It's it's uh, it's five. It's fifteen past Ren. Twenty feet. Fifteen past Ren. Twenty feet. Forty feet. I would have had twenty feet of movement. Okay. To run down the ladder. Bear with me here for a second. That's fine. And I think I know why it's not giving you your vision. Okay. All right. Um, so you would be 15 feet off the ground, but you'd be on the next map. So the uh, ground looks very familiar. Looks very similar to the uh, metal chamber um, where you saw the squishers, the other agents, and where you think Yen Lauren was last Okay. Okay. Um, Broxgar, top of the initiative is yours. What, uh... Did this disengage, guy... man. Yeah, did this guy swing on me on, on his turn? Uh, no, it looks like he took the dodge action. All right. And the guy behind him looked like he uh, was readying his crossbow, putting his swords away. Uh, yeah, I'll disengage. Okay. And I'll drop a bog bomb. In, in that square? Yeah, I'll make sure like, uh, like Valette sees me doing it. Okay. So that you know, I've done it a few times now. Soon that the within the next round, the room's gonna start filling up with smoke. Cool, cool. All right. Bullet. So since I'm within five feet, I'd have advantage and auto crit if I hit this dude. He is still held, yeah. Awesome. Uh, we'll try and take one out. Uh, we'll snicker snack. Hit. Hit. And then uh, your crit damage is uh, 15, is it not? Yeah. So 30 plus 20. 43. 
So 51. 51 damage on the dude. Uh, he's very bloodied, but he's not dead. All right, time the GTFO. Uh, that's, that's one, two. Uh, that's ten, uh, fifteen, and so I can't enter. Can I share a space with allies? No, you can't end a turn that way. No. So I am stuck outside. Um. It is what it is. Okay. I uh, uh, okay. And yeah, also, I wasn't I'll, clear enough about my th action. And I'll second wind. Um, uh, 1d10 plus 7. <laughs> Fun. Alright. Uh, plus 8. Alright. Alright. As you kind of stand there, uh, trying to move past, you hear footfalls and you hear a like a crystalline sound kind of glazing through the air. As you turn around to see what it is, you see her come around the corner, her sword kind of cutting through the air with like a trail behind it. And as she comes at you, she swings the blade in three quick cuts straight into you. Uh, the first one is a 19. You manage to get judgment up and block it and kind of push it back away as you push the shield out too. She comes in for a second swing, cuts into the shield uh, a bit causing a bit of the chunks to kind of fly off the side of it, but you manage to dart it to the side. She spirals the weapon and then brings it point down into your chest. Oh, fun. <laughs> critting uh, and dealing 48 points of damage. As she 48? Slams it into your chest. <laughs> Good thing I healed. <laughs> Wait, was that 4d8 or 4 4 8. 4 8. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, if I didn't heal last turn, I'd be unconscious. <laughs> As she's holding the blade inside of you, you also feel like it's wounded you deeply. At uh -huh. the beginning of your turn, you'll take a d4 points of necrotic damage. And you'll need to make a constitution saving throw against it um, immediately after taking the damage to see if the wound stops or not. You can also, okay. as an action, attempt to try and... Let me double check wounding. Hold on. No, you're just wounded. Um, oh no, yeah, you you make the Constitution saving throw after the wounding damage, and then as a on your turn you can make a DC 15 medicine check to try and stop the wound. All right. Uh, that was her on 15. Ren, you're up. Okay, I'm thinking. I'm trying to think if it makes sense to use the the dual tech feature with um Bullet becomes the exact duplicate of you you are refunded the action you used to activate this dual tech and the duplicate immediately gets a turn acting in every way is the exact duplicate of you yeah i'm going to do that i'm going to open the door i'm going to touch the tip of my sword to valets and then i'm going to um scoot back towards the ladder and uh, if i'm right then valette can immediately act yeah correct okay yeah do that i'm gonna go i'm gonna just run down the ladder or wh whichever way the ladder is okay so now valette should be able to move all right valette is a copy of ren 5 10 15 you have a speed of 30 so you can move 15 feet down which would be 10 feet down or no rather five feet down the ladder um so you're not as far down as sam yet um okay and then uh yeah valette you have a turn if you'd like to take it. And you are Ren for these actions, so you have cunning action right. and the yeah, yeah, yeah. You can disengage, you can do all that jazz. Bonus action, disengage. Well, it's it's one action, right? Or is it a full turn? It, hold, hold on. I think it's it, just I'll, one I'll, action. I'll, I'll, with its own movement, attacks, hit point, and the like. I don't know about that. Let me double check it. I, I just put it in the box. Okay. Just read it. Gets a turn. Gets a turn. Acting in every way. So they could do yeah. all those things. Go right. nuts. So I guess this is GTFO time. So, yes. So uh, disengage, movement, dash. Okay. Are you going to shut Perfect. the door on your way out? 
Yes. Yeah. I'll shut the door behind me and dash down that ladder. Okay. Nice. You hear words spoken in Draconic. Uh, Broxgar, since you're the last one remaining. And then you also hear what sounds like um, a lock locking the door. All right. Um, Sam, you are on the other map. Yeah, uh, literally, I just climbed down the rest of the way, stepped to the side, and I would prepare to cast uh, Scorching Ray if anyone besides my friends comes down the ladder. Okay. You hear the same mechanical well, kind of... I, I would like to say, actually, correction. I am going to cast Scorching Ray if I see someone, period, whether from the ladder or other direction. That is not an ally. That is not one of my friends. Yeah. Okay. You would recognize the... Oh, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge and terrifying. Uh, you would recognize the atmosphere of the area that you're in as the same facility portion of the pyramid uh, that you were in when uh, you dealt with during last week. Um, right. It looks like um, the next person down the ladder, I believe, would be Ren, uh, who was first in line, um, and Valette would be right after. Um, that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move everybody to the same map. Uh, bear with me here for a second while I parse that out. And, uh, Valette, I'm assuming you're putting the mask on at this point? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and we did agree that unless I say otherwise, Sam's just got the mask on permanently, right? Yeah, which is why we had an issue when we first started, because it right. um, doesn't start that way. Gotcha. All right, cool. And I went ahead and uh, augmented that. So cool, cool, cool. And uh, computer, do the thing. Um, we do have to still continue on initiative, though, for a reason. Uh, Broxcar, um, go ahead and uh, you're going to go down the ladder or are you staying up there? Yeah, I'd like to go down. Okay. Um, Valette? Take a D4 points of necrotic damage. Right. Oh, it'd help if I uh, did the R part of that. Did I space? Yeah. Hey, one. Okay. And then roll a constitution saving throw. I am actually have decent this. Uh, 11! Okay. Um... What do you want to do during your turn? Just climb down? Uh, so there's nothing I can do to try and end this effect? It's a medicine check. Okay. I'm guessing I, one would need to be trained for that? No. Okay. Um, when I... how And how far is it to the base of the stairs? Uh, probably another 20 feet. All right. Uh, uh, perfect. I get to the base of the stairs and I will perform a medicine check. Okay. Nine. All right. Still blood or still wounding. Um, Nine. Ren, you make it down to the bottom of the steps with your movement, or down the steps, uh, bottom of the ladder with your movement. Yep. What would you like to do once you're down there? Um, I'm going to stealth ahead, uh, being careful, all that stuff. Five, ten, fifteen. Um, maybe I'll get right to here and take a peek. Um, do um, I, uh, I, question. Do you see the backs of squishers? Like, I do see the backs of yeah. squishers, yeah. So I'm going to back up a little bit, actually. And you went north on I went the north. map? I went north on the map. Okay. That's the only way to go. When there are squishers... No, it's not. Uh, yeah, there's a way to the... Um, uh, oh. Where, where that was just to the west. Okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... After I move, I'm going to hide. Okay. Uh, you obviously know the um, uh, power of that in comparison to um, uh, Squisher. Uh, that's fine. Um, just making sure you're aware of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Sam, it looks like um, Valette is kind of bleeding Vite from her chest. Um, she looked like Ren when she came down, and then it like went away suddenly, like it has in the past when she used her Esper Edge. Okay, uh, his with her. Is there something that I can do about it? You would see that it's a wounding trait from um, 
that kind of magical weapon, you'd be able to make a uh, medicine check if you'd like to try and staunch the wound. Tim, it's plus zero. You okay with this? <laughs> what would Sam do? Sam doesn't give a shit. He goes north. <laughs> All right. Yeah. He follows Ren. You, you see, you see Ren way. kind of like, I'm assuming, kind of holding his hand out and saying kind of like, stop. Just a presumption there. Broxgar, you see Valette's kind of uh, very well wounded. Uh, do you want to attempt to assist her in uh, helping her with the wound? or? Yeah, I hope. You have advantage for the check. I know a robots. I don't know a little bit about robots. Robots is... The humans are dead. AADC. 14 is not good enough, but very close. Definitely doing a lot better than uh, everyone else who has. Bullet, D4. Yep. Three. And if you want to attempt to Tim, try and stop the wound. Do you have left? Two. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to try. Okay. Uh, 19. With Broxgar hey. kind of, you know, uh, uh, helping out quite a bit there in the beginning there, um, you kind of managed to find the uh, wound and close it off, uh, stopping the bleeding uh, of the vitae from your body as you kind of look down. You feel like your frame is more pulverized than you've had it happen, um, ha have, have had it uh, be before. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and kill the initiative at this point. Um, Thank you, Broxgar. I don't know if I'll be much use in a future fight, though. Time to rest. Name of the dungeon. Are, wait, are we out of initiative order now? Yeah. Uh, as a quick question, uh, does Valette look like she's upset right now? About what? Just in general. Uh, I don't know what current my, what my current personality is. Let me look it up. Make a charisma saving throw. Uh. <laughs> oh, wand of smiles. Wand of scowls. I don't have uh. a wand of smiles. <laughs> no, I don't look mad because I crit that it, shit. Doesn't it do Damn something? It. Doesn't it do something if they crit against it? Uh, no, it does uh. not. It, the only thing it does is if I fail a. D20 roll if I use all three charges and it. it will switch to Wand of Smiles. You right. should scowl after that roll. <laughs> I mean, I just did it as a joke. I don't really care that much. So, Rent, you it's would notice... It's a DC 10 charisma. <laughs> you would notice that at your current position, the squishers have not noticed you. It seems that these squishers are focused in a sentry mode in that general direction. Do you want to try and advance a little bit closer so you can see down the doorway a bit, or do you want to stay where you are? No. Safe? Actually, um, if they, if I knew that there's another way out of this, you said that there's one down to the... Yep. Then that's what I want to do instead. Let's explore also, that instead. at your current position, you're reminded that the elevator down is right there. Yeah, but that would draw yeah. their attention. Perhaps. No, it's, yeah, right to the left of where you pinged. That's where the conservator came out of. Yep. Yeah, let's not do that. Let's go to the south. Okay. So is it he? Uh, is uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. There. Left there. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do let's do that instead. Okay. All the machinery you're looking at here seems to be working quite intensely, um, and uh, seems to be heavily going. Uh, there are a couple of levers near kind of the center pieces, and like particularly here across from where you're at, um, that look like they've been switched to like a an off mode. Um, your presumption is that the agents who are upstairs are probably the workers um, that were down here and chased after you, or rather chased after Sam and Bullet um, and uh, Gilbert. Um, based on what you're looking at here, um, the entryway out of this place that you're aware of being an entryway out of this place is blocked by the squishers. And um, there doesn't appear to be any other exits or anything to that effect. Wait, so these stairs down are also blocked by squishers? Which which stairs down? 
The ones I, I'm at stairs now. No. Oh. That's a ladder up. Oh, that's a ladder up. Okay. That's where you came down from. Uh, uh, yeah, we don't want there... to go that way. Oh, there's a way here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, right yeah. Here. That this That's is the way we're going. Yeah, this, this was this was the machine I was pinging. It, that seems to be in kind oh, of a okay. standard, just stasis mode. The rest of the machine seemed to be humming with some sort of activity. Uh, you're not sure quite what. Yeah, let's go this way. No okay. squishers in sight. The second. Um, go ahead. I was going to say, just out of curiosity, I'm assuming Stacy is back with the party now. Oh, My yeah. Familiar. Well, you had put it on uh, Brox, right? Or Ren, rather. Yeah. yeah. You got your familiar back. So I just want to try something out since I know there are squishers up there from Ren. Okay. I just want Stacy to run up that direction, see if the squishers notice her, and if they do, just bamf her out. Okay. Quickly. The second it kind of moves that way from basically the shadows of the room with the uh, the elevator in it, you see just kind of this flutter of a shadow kind of pass over the uh, creature and kind of uh, cause it to kind of stop for a second. And then it lands kind of near where you're at on a uh, perch like right here. Um, and you look at it and it's um, a very familiar looking owl. Or what was the, the damn bird? It was in Snowflake. In Lawrence. Yeah. Oh, that's so sad. I thought Snowflake was in a process of not being around, so that's as interesting. Indeed. Wait, so can a familiar exist without the its um, owner? Mm, I don't believe so. So Ian Lawrence still alive. And had an hour to cast Find Familiar. No, it takes ten minutes. If you oh, cast ten minutes. Or yeah. No, it takes it takes an hour and ten minutes. Oh. Did you do ritual casting it? It's an hour normally? Okay. Yeah, it's whatever. an hour normally and ritual casting at 10 minutes. There's so. the bird. You're gesturing for your animal to come back or the bird? Well, for, for the bird to come towards me and Stacy. Okay. Sure. You see the bird fly up and rush the uh, doors to the right. You immediately hear the sound of kind of like rubbery kind of suits flopping around. And then you hear like loud footsteps headed and hoofing off to the north. See, I told you he was fine. And then I'll... Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to see what the rest of the party does. They're totally unaware of you. They're looking down the other way. Oh. Okay, then I guess I'll... Hmm. I'd assume Valette's kind it's... of staying in the middle, not really rushing off to do anything gallant at this moment. Nope. <laughs> Valette's looking for a moment, if needed. Well, Here, Valette does this. Brox, I suggest you carry some of this stuff in case I need to sacrifice myself. <laughs> these boots and this armor seem to be of some value. Hold on to them. And I give him the Wayfinder's armor and the uh, Ranhin boots. Ranhin boots. The boots are kind of fiery red, look like they're made out of uh, reddish leather, and they have kind of like uh, uh, fiery horse motifs. To them, and then the boot or the armor appears to be kind of uh, made out of mithril, um, with kind of like uh, watery um, uh, merfolk motifs to it. Cool. I'll hold on to the. Was it mithril plate mail that I had? I think so. I'll hold... since I don't know if you can carry it. I'll hold on to the mithril plate mail and the great sword, but these seem more special than them. The bird lands back on the same perch it was at. It doesn't sound like the squishers are returning to where they, where it was. But That's same. fine. Sam rejoins the rest of the party and tells them that the squishers didn't seem to be going after after his familiar. He specifically said, you know, like doesn't mention that he saw the bird, and he doesn't mention anything about the footsteps. But yeah, they don't seem to be going after Stacy at least. I'm not sure if the rest of us would be willing to, or able to sneak past so easily. 
Thank goodness. Zach's here. Hold on. And transition. Perfect. <laughs> I was prepared for this. Um, okay. Um, so that said, um, how long do you guys wait here looking around? Um, maybe I could stealth ahead and try to investigate while they try to hold back. Okay. Uh, quick, uh, just because I've been a little bit in my own head. Sam has not mentioned Ian Lauren's familiar. Nope. Gotcha. I have nothing to say. I didn't see that. Leading. Okay. Um, so as you guys are kind of m moseying about, uh, taking about two or three minutes, I would presume, easily, you start hearing a loud clang, clang, clang on the ladder above you. Yeah, I mean, Sam wouldn't want to take two or three minutes generally just to say, because uh, that was even before you would have said the clang, clang, clang thing. Like, Sam does yep. not want to stick around. Well, when you guys look up at the ladder, you would see uh, Zach describe your character. Uh, I mean, y'all saw the picture, right? Nope. Yeah. Okay. So he has kind of the facial structure of a regular human, but he's got sort of a paler green tone like an orc and is surprisingly small considering the tusks and the other features that you're seeing. He's probably stands at around like five, four, five, five, uh, weighs a whopping like 90 pounds. It looks like him, super skinny, super small. Uh, and old as well, uh, appears to be at least in his late 60s, early 70s, if not older. And uh, Ren and Brox, you would know this individual as Brack. He's a badass. He fought hard with us. Uh, John, to be fair, is he one of my allies? <laughs> Uh, you, you would have, you've been doing other things since you mentioned that ready to action, so I don't, okay. it's not global. I, I wasn't sure, Fair yeah, I wasn't sure how long, and I figured I'd just ask. No worries. Um, you get down there, um, I'll pull you onto the map here, hold on. And, uh, I don't even know if I made you a token. <laughs> you did, I saw it earlier. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, Anyway, um, so uh, you head down, um, and here's what you here's what you from your point of view, Zach, real quick. You got up to the top of the chute, and you left the others there because the weird blue gnome that you just now met said he was going to go help out the people and help them kind of heal up. And so you're like, oh, okay. Well, I'll lead you the way, and I'll introduce you to this so they don't think that you're some crazy guy. And then you started hearing the sounds of battle downstairs. So you just power slid down the chute to get down there as fast as you could. Wasn't fast enough. By the time you got there, the signs of combat had been scuffled, and you learned that there was just one agent left behind at this door. You very quickly killed him, and saw that the door that that guy was guarding was locked. And you've opened up the lock, moved into a ladderway, and have climbed down the ladder. That's exactly where you're at. Cool. And I do see Brock Scar and, and Ren. Yeah, Ren. Perfect. Ah, brothers! It's great to be back here. <laughs> Ready to draw arms again? <laughs> While it is a nice thing to have reinforcements, I would advise you to keep it down. Who the fuck is this guy? Ah, just another brother looking to fight some fuckers, eh? <laughs> I like this one. Yeah. I like this is Vra. It's a bit of a stubborn ass. But they can tell you. <laughs> Few things are as strong as me. You hear a <laughs> coming from down the way uh, as Snowflake tries to draw attention to itself. Man, I tell you, Stacey has had this weird cough for the longest time. <laughs> we all we all hear. We all hear Snowflake, correct? You hear that damn bird. How is Snowflake around? I thought... I thought Ian Lauren had lost it earlier in the dungeon. I think we should head that way. He might still be alive. 
Happy to follow your lead, unless you'd like me to go first. <laughs> yeah, Normally, I, I wouldn't mind in case you run into the charge, something. but I am quite injured right now, so yes, go on. I'm fresh as a baby's bottom, but a uh, weapon would be nice. Oh, you, you have, have, you have awesome. Oh, do I have it? Oh, I have it. Sorry, never mind. Ignore what I said. I'm a charge ahead. I'd like to say Sam is just staring, just sort of like. Not necessarily incredulous, but somewhere on the verge of incredulous. There. Real quick, Frack. Does do you think you might be able to fit into, or might be able to carry this armor for me? It's weighing me down quite a bit. Happy to. You got a you got a pack I can stick it in. It's kind of awkward to you know use my hands, brother. Uh. I will just give you my backpack and all the weight that comes with it. <laughs> Works for me. <laughs> it ain't gonna slow um, me down. Let me pull up my calculator. <laughs> I have a lot of shit in it. Sam, still incredulous. All of these, <laughs> all of these weird things happening. Getting left behind to get murdered by singing sword. Getting... Oh, see that part. That part that's didn't bug Sam as much. That's that's what Sam expects at this point, is to be left that's... behind to get sliced and diced. Typical. Sometimes it would have been Yen Lauren, but, you know, <laughs> who knows what happened there. Yeah. Womp womp. Alright, uh, here's a backpack that weighs, all in all, with everything attached to it, uh, 80 pounds. Oh no! Now with my <laughs> other with my other six pounds, that's uh, eighty six pounds total. <laughs> with my twenty strength, oh no! You also you also now have a great sword attached to that as well. I just basically gave you everything that I had. Valette, um, and, oh sorry. Uh, once you guys have kind of gathered, done some trafficking of itemry, uh, the owl does let out another hoot. There appears to be passageway to the uh, west that leads into this factory. The floor that it's still the same floor it has like the uh, it makes sound when you walk around. Very hard to remain quiet here, and you also have the droning of the machines near you. Uh, it's a very functional operating factory. Um, that said, uh, is there anything in particular anybody wants to do? Um, I thought. I was charging after the sound of the bird. Okay. If so, you're heading directly north. And once you get to the north cross section, to your left, there's a, the double sliding doors, the um, uh, lift that out of character, your character, or you would have seen last week. Um, that's where the conservator came from. Uh, the bird, mm -hmm. once you approach, was standing on this um, kind of doohickey off to your right. And when you kind of get close, it kind of flaps its wings and cuts off to the right, moving through the passageway on the right side. You're muted. Oh, sorry. Uh, I got, I think I got him. And I'm taking off running this way if anyone's following. Okay. Yeah, when you get to there, um, and kind of when you get to the next chamber, you're going to see a couple yeah. of things. There's a door off to the north, or, or uh, there's a passageway off to the north side, and there seem to be kind of uh, five or six of these individuals in blue costumes. You've never seen these things before. Kind of moseying about and moving stuff around and kind of looking around. It looks like they're looking around, but they're not really looking. They're just kind of, it looks like they're searching for something. Um, you don't know what. To the mm -hmm. east, uh, there's a hallway that leads to a door, a double door that's left wide open. Uh, but it looks like the lock for that door is on your side. So if you wanted to close and lock those doors, you could. And then to the south, there's a narrow passageway. And the last thing you see of the bird is it swooping around into that narrow passageway. Just... Is anyone close on my six right now? I don't know now? if anyone's following you. Yeah, I'm following. Then whoever's first behind me, I want to point to that door and say, slam that thing shut. I'm going to chase a bird. And I'm going to keep running. Okay. I do so. Where is the fucking... Brock's door car. is up here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. This one. So the door is the same passageway you came in when you fur to the, to, the, uh, to the east. It would be the same passageway that you came in when you first entered into this place and then ran away from uh, the Squishers, the Conservator, all the agents. When you're moving to the door, you look out the door, 
and what you see um, is the same passageways that you went through, but you also see a couple of agents moving in that direction. They go, hey, and then you shut the door and lock it. It's the same agents from upstairs. <laughs> I'll re relay that information and uh, continue after the crazy green guy. The rest of you would see the uh, squishers to the north. It looks like they're searching for something. Sam, you would know that they seem to have chased uh, the familiar and um, are looking for it and can't find it. Uh, what a familiar feeling. Uh, Brack, when you move down the hallway and back and around, you see a grisly scene. Uh, looks like a dead uh, mage, a tiefling, red skin, short, dark horns. Uh, looks like his chest has been pounded in with some kind of rock or stone, possibly gemstone. You're not sure, sharp, but just raw, ferocious force. Um, and then kind of cradled next to him, um, is the body of an individual with kind of blackish hair, a uh, beard. There's a single crossbow bolt in his eye. Um, and he's kind of laying to the side of that individual. And he's wearing a very brightly colored, uh, multicolored cloak. In his hand, kind of extended off to the side, is a staff with a crystalline kind of gemstone at the top of it. And as you kind of see the scene... You see the air move near the gemstone, and you see this blackened form kind of hunched over the shard. And it kind of looks at you, and its eyes flare purple. <laughs> and the shard and it vanish. I was hoping we could trade up. As you, I assume, seeing that weird thing, you drew the sword, right? Oh, yeah. The second you draw the sword, it flares bright in rainbow colors. Everyone behind you, your Esper Edges start flaring with their energies as well. As it flares, you feel this kind of strange sensation coming from the weapon, and you're kind of like, what? Um, and this woman with bright blonde hair um, and a very angelic-looking countenance appears in front of you. Right, so... The shard... You must get the shard. And then she kind of vanishes. And then the others of you, you see your uh, individual uh, individuals. Uh, Tim, go ahead and uh, tell Sam what, what, uh, what, what he sees. Basically says the exact same thing. <laughs> the shard. The shard. You, you can't get the shard. <laughs> Quickly. It, it's very important. Valette, you see a noble-looking individual. Um, the shard. You must get the shard. And Brox, you see, Kolgar, the shard. You must get the shard. And they vanish very shortly after they appear, and then all of them kind of fizzle away. The the energy kind of fizzles away. Um, but yeah, it looks like Yen Loren um, lays dead with a crossbow bolt in his eye. Um, his coat. You know, just kind of sprawled out to the side. His gear kind of, you know, still on his person. And the conservator looks like it was uh, beaten to death um, with Shard. You Lauren badass. Valette, do you go to inspect it? Yeah, I, I figure I The I'd second you in. get within 10 feet, you fall like a doll to the ground. Of the door? No, within no, the body. No, Lauren. Okay. So, um, Frack, you watch as this person you just met just kind of just turns off. So, can oh, I walk over? right. Cursed sword and a robot man that can't walk. This is a robot good woman. group. I love it. Robot, robot woman. <laughs> robot brother. They're all brothers. <laughs> Very good. Sam, you said you were walking up? <laughs> yeah, so does Yen Lord have a spell book on him? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's cold. Every, every, it would, but it won't have anything you don't already have access to. Well, no, no, no. It, it's not so much taking it for spells as taking it for the memento's sake. So I'm yeah. gonna go ahead and notate because uh, I don't want to give you access to the character sheet because it's it's mine. Uh, it's my, that's fine. Um, but uh, the things that you can kind of pull off, um, the shard is gone, as we've discussed. Um, you've got. Uh, there's a device on his left wrist that appears to have kind of a, a, a blade that juts out, a hidden blade uh, that you 
never really seen uh, Yen Lauren use before. Uh, at his belt, I did use it. I did use it once, but, but I don't know if anyone saw yeah, it. Saw yeah. it. Uh, there's well, an auto. Sam wasn't there then, even. So. Right. There's his auto torch, which you've seen him use a couple of times. Uh, his studded leather armor is still in pretty pristine condition since the shot went directly to the head. Um, his fine clothes. I would. Is... I would actually want to take the armor because I thought mine was ruined a while back. It was indeed. So it'll take I, you four minutes to don it if you want to, and it'll take you four minutes to relinquish it from him. So it'll take you a total of eight minutes to pull it off and put it on, if that's your goal. I, I do that. Okay. Um, the fine clothes underneath, uh, and also the very um, ornate um, cloak um, and uh, robe that he wore. Um, he has his spell book. Um, he has a communication device, a short range communication device. Um, he has a disguise kit, a forgery kit, uh, 10 vials of colored inks, uh, ranging across the spectrum. Um, he has a conglomerate signet, which you would identify Vlad as being when he was acting as a, um, uh, effectively an acting, uh, want to become a mage in the mage year. So, well, work. When Vlad can actually see things again. Right. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're currently turned off. Uh, there's a performer's <laughs> license, a driver's license, uh, a rapier, the amulet of health, and a cloak of protection. Oh, yeah, I might grab that amulet of health also, but I definitely want to take the book, or the spell book and the ink. And in his left hand, the one that wasn't holding the shard, is a vial of Vitae, or not Vitae, Orbo. Very similar to what was worn on, uh, Viken. No idea where he got a hold of that. <laughs> Might be how he turned the tide against a mage. Um, Matt, uh, yeah. let's talk about this amulet. <laughs> fight! 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 You got I, the you got the last treasure, dude. You got the pearl. Sam's holding the amulet as Ren's basically stripping uh, a corpse. Yep, Let's yep. talk about that amulet. <laughs> Pulling the corpse. I'm doing it, Ginger. I I kiss Yin Lauren on his forehead as I do. What up? Well, I was actually going to say first. Let's you know, like get what we need off of the body, and then. Since we can't do a proper burial, I do have druid craft. But if John would let me, I can try to give him a quick cremation so that we don't leave him you'll behind. Need, so you'll, to speak. you'll need to get the uh, uh, the Orvo away from him. That's fine. I'm just saying, like, if we wanted to give him somewhat of a burial. Sure. Yeah. Does anyone grab the, the, really the Orvo? I'll grab it. Okay. Can I grab it? Yep. Do you want to move it away from everyone else? Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of feel like ah. everything magical on your body kind of go inert as you take it up, and you kind of move away, and uh, Valette, you start moving. Yeah, Lauren. Well, at least he took down the conservator with him. He served some good purpose at the end. Yeah, as I said, we should get what we need really quickly and then, you know. Agreed. Somewhat of a barrier. Is there anything on the Conservator's corpse? Uh, conservator has a spell book. Right. <laughs> conservator has a wand. Um, conservator uh -huh. also has uh, three rings. Okay. I, I take all of them. Okay. Well, I hand the book to Sam because I have nothing to put it in, and I... I give him the wand because I'm not going to be able to use that. Okay. And I'll put the three rings in my pouch. Okay. Uh, one of the rings uh, has a conglomerate symbol emblazoned okay. upon it, um, kind of ornately. Uh, the other two, one is kind of uh, white gold uh, with some etchings in Elvish. And okay. the other one is a... What do the etchings say? Uh, it's It looks like it's magical gibberish. Okay. Possibly a name. Uh, you're not sure. But like... Speak since I can speak and read Elvish. I know that it's magical gibberish. Yeah, it's not like just Elven characters. Cool, right. cool, cool. And then uh, the other one is just a brass band. Okay. All right. Well, Sam, it looks like it's up to you to identify things. We got two magic rings, most likely. Oh, and Vrak was it? 
here. And I take out two bracers and toss them to him, saying, forgot about these. They might help defend you a little bit better. And we You're think... You're willing to part with them, brother. I'm going to take them. <laughs> we, we think they might be bracers of armor, but they have yet to be fully identified. Okay. I'm happy to wear them one way or the other. They're braces of archery. <laughs> Um, but is there anything else we want off of Yen Lauren's body really quickly or because otherwise I, I yeah again don't feel like leaving its body down here R can't real, really take it with us so real all quick. magic items all gold so someone needs to write these cloak. go ahead sorry Joe sorry I didn't want to take the coat okay you're taking the coat okay uh, then there's the hidden blade auto torch um, the clothes which have been taken now um, his backpack his spell book his communication device, um, a disguise kit, a forgery kit, 10 vials of colored ink, uh, the conglomerate signia, uh, performer's license specifically for Yen Lauren, uh, driver's license specifically for Yen Lauren, uh, rapier, the amulet of health, and a cloak of protection. I'll take um, uh, communications device and flick em bicus. Okay. Uh, roll me a wisdom check. Uh, 18. That's really good. So you recall that uh, Gilbert has a communication device. Mm -hmm. And after thinking about it for a moment, you also remember his frequency. So you think you could actually cool. put in a message to him if needed. All right. Uh, I just sent him a quick message just to let him know that he can reach me. Sure. Who had the sending stone? The one that was found uh, last session? Or the session before? Uh, I gave it to someone. Mm -hmm. I think I was the one that picked it up, and I gave it. Yeah, I believe it was peeled off of Enforcer Thirty Three. I probably gave it to you and Lauren. <laughs> then you find the sending stone. That, does sound, that <laughs> sounds. That sounds right. It sounds like the kind of thing I didn't put on my character sheet when I was supposed to. So Broxgar, um, as you're kind of sitting there, um, you know, looking at the uh, Orvo. Um, oh, never mind. Never mind. I forgot. It doesn't do the thing that it was going to do because you're holding the Orvo. Never mind. <laughs> I'll just talk to myself uh, over here for a little bit. I'm, I'm <laughs> Anything else you guys want to pull off of him? Otherwise. Yeah, you want to strip him for some meat too? Jesus, guys. Did he have any gold on him? Uh, a couple two, of platinum, I think. Two platinum. Any gold fillings? I'm taking the two platinum. I'm broke as crap. All right. Not as broke as me. And that's the last call. If that's you because you're broken on the floor. If you didn't write it down, it's it's going up in flames. Druidcraft, very, very quick. Uh, it doesn't get rid of the whole body. It doesn't uh, emulate him, but it basically gets rid of what's remaining um, and kind of makes it so he's not um, identifiable. It kind of makes it so it's a little bit more peaceful than how it was. That said, uh, what do you guys do next? Just GTA all the stuff I took off. Oh, and if he had a bag for all that, I probably would have taken that too, so I have a bag now. Mm -hmm. Or, so that Vrak has a bag. Yeah, he did say he had a backpack, so. Yep. So, I give Vrak Ian Lauren's backpack and take mine back. You Sans, can take all that weight uh, back. <laughs> Sans the great sword and the armor. Well, Sans the armor. That's the big thing that was putting me over. You're muted, Zach. So I'm just taking the armor from you. So you'd just be having uh, the five pounds for a backpack and the I guess mithril armor is half the weight, so roughly around twenty-five pounds for the, uh, mithril plate. Accurate. Is it full plate or? It is full plate. Cool. Sadly, if it was half, you might be able to get some use out of it. Uh, he's a barbarian, so probably not. Yeah, with my con, I literally can't get better with armor unless it's like magical armor. Oh. My okay. unarmored defense is just as good, if not better. Nice. And then that also means that you can use the armor, the braces of armor, too, if you don't have a. Uh... 
-hmm. The Mithra oh, half plate no. would actually do you better in our department. It'd be oh, well, would it? 15 plus your dex modifier, but um, uh, I don't know yeah, if it would affect the good. Well, it, you know it's mithril, and you know it's half plate. Um, the magical Could properties of it would be what you'd be identifying, but yeah, it puts you at a 19, but you wouldn't be able to use your fast movement feature, I don't think. Because hmm. it's medium armor. What fast movement? Don't barbarians get fast movement? Nah. But, but, uh, uh, yeah, not they do it fifth level or something. Yeah, they do at some point. I'm pretty sure. You only get it once, I think, so you just have 10 extra feet of movement. But... Yeah. So long as you're not wearing uh, big armor. But since you didn't even know you had it, it won't be that terribly important to you if you go up with the scale and put on some mithril plate armor. Well, yeah, like that. Fast movement. you right. Increased by 10 feet. Yep. Yep. Strange. Indeed. Um, that I said, just, it's strange that that's the only thing that doesn't automatically add to my character sheet. Like, I have extra attack and all that other crap. Strange. Rockstar, uh, based on your positioning, I'm assuming you're kind of keeping an eye on the squishers to see if they're doing anything. Yeah. They seem to be kind of stopped in their current position, like they're waiting some kind of order or something. Um, but they are pretty closely grouped together. Like, if something were to, you know, get close to them, um, they, they are all kind of just piling together within 10 feet of each other and are just kind of standing around waiting for something. Um... It looks like they were given commands and they haven't been given new ones. Maybe we should continue before those guys turn around. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you do me a favor and make me a wisdom check? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you're very aware uh, from your last conflict with these creatures, it, their nature is that they are generated as magic. They are like very similar to constructs uh, in that regard. Throw the vitae in the middle of... Orvo. <laughs> Whatever it is. Hey, that's good. I do that. Okay. If you toss that over there in their direction and it hits, they all just kind of drop to the ground and it looks like they're laying there as piles of muck with suits. Uh, they don't spill out of the suits. The suits are just kind of laying there motionless, much like when um, uh, Bullet came into uh, proximity of the Orvo. Dope. Good idea, Sam. You're pretty sure that I'd if you kill pick, them. yeah, you're pretty sure that if you pick it up and move away from them, um, that might be a problem. But yeah, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. If you're attacking them when you get over there, what you very quickly realize is that the non-magical weapons don't seem to be doing anything to the suits, and they're all non-magical because you're in the Orvo. Ah, Black well, steers know. clear of the Orvo. <laughs> <laughs> Sam pushes Valette it. No, I'm I, I kind of like my agency. Uh, um, thank you. <laughs> John, I mean, we can have a contested athletics check. I mean, I'm rolling up with 20 strength and proficiency. I'll throw him in. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't matter, though. He's not going to fall over and be unconscious for the time when you do that. So, uh, he's just yeah, but guy. he might get it on his clothes. Well, there's no getting anything on his clothes. They didn't, they didn't leak out of the suits. The suits just basically... <laughs> And okay. now we're just like, um, yeah. Instead of having like a balloon shape, you now have just a puddle shape inside of a... Yeah. These are pretty wild contracts. Indeed. Oh, where did everyone go? They're kind of north of you. Okay. So, wait, which way was the... Oh, this way up towards these guys yep. <clears throat> is where we're going. Are you going to check out that room, Brox, um, when you're there? Yeah. Uh, if so, you'll find that there appears to be kind of like a small um, uh, area here off to the side, and it appears that there's some sort of machinery in there with a lot of dials and buttons. Um, if you recall um, from uh, last session, kind of the reporting of what uh, happened after, one of the agents came from in here. Uh, looking at the mechanisms, they appear to be, you know, kind of some lights on some of the buttons. 
Um, but there's no markings or anything. You'd have to be trained how to use whatever this is. If you'd like, you can attempt to make a research check to see if you can figure it out. Yeah. A 16. You think that um, it's currently in kind of like a, 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 a idle state? Um, you're pretty sure you can shut it completely off, whatever this machine is, uh, with a couple of flicks of switches here and a presses of buttons there. But that's pretty much all you can figure out is how to get it from uh, idle to shut off. Oh, yeah, I'll shut it off. Boom. <laughs> And then the machine next to you, with the pipe kind of going into it, you hear it go, and it sounds like liquid inside that was thrashing about, making kind of a uh, engine noise. Now it's just kind of sitting dormant inside of those um, pipes and that machine to the north of you. I did something. Okay. What would you guys like to do? Explore more. Okay. Moving about uh, again. If you go back I to the main. The orb over there. Okay. If you go back to the main chamber, the locked doors are to the east. The elevator or lift is to the west, and then there are two pathways. You came from the south, and there's a passageway to the north as well. Um, and from what you saw from the passageway to the south, there's a bunch of machinery beyond that point. And you assume that on the back wall of the lift, there's probably more machinery on the back end as well. But you can check it out if you'd like. I'm not particularly interested in the machine. Okay. So then there's the lift, uh, which is pretty much the only other thing that's you know, unless you want to go out the door and deal with the agents outside no it would be four against two or more however many showed up okay whatever you want you call it uh correction it would be four against two currently no that's why i said or however many showed up afterwards yeah like we knew there was two but there's probably more now you in total saw six and that's including the enforcer upstairs. To the lift. Which is probably shut down. No, to the right. Are you going to the <laughs> Are you going to the lift? If you move close to it, the second you get in proximity of it, it opens. Uh, inside it looks like there's enough space for everyone to pick normally. Cool. Yes. I push the buttons. Before you go down, does anybody want to take any actions to um, ring anyone up or like ask if anybody can get down here? Gilbert. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you give Gilbert a call? He says, yeah, I'll, ring Romano. I'll be right down. <laughs> Perfect impression. Yep. That was pretty spot on. Oh, Kevin, when he listens to this. <laughs> uh, he's, Where watching. he's watching right now. He's almost on, he says. Yeah. I don't sound anything like Kevin. that. Well, let me tell you. We're about to have a full group. Kevin, I have two health. Heal me. <laughs> uh, Here's what I'm going to do. If you wait at the ladder, uh, what you end up hearing is kind of closer to the time when Gilbert will arrive, basically, to kind of give you an idea, a sense of urgency here. The door, the locked door, you start seeing kind of a burning, kind of just emanating, like a heat kind of radiating off of the doors that are locked, the east doors. It doesn't seem like they're burgeoning through uh, suddenly or anything, but what it appears like is someone on the other end um, is attempting to melt their way through with some sort of either arcana or some sort of device. Um, but before that happens, Gilbert comes down the ladder, kind of brushes over and says, clear upstairs and I made sure everyone was safe. Uh, I got I got them out. Good work. They're in the tower where we you remember the tower with all the guns? Mm, what? Good That's work, where guys. I hit them. 
What what language are you speaking right now? I'm I'm sorry. What? Can oh, you repeat that? Oh, I'm Kevin. Oh. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, link for Zoom should be up uh, a ways. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for Zoom. I mean, it's it's working on it right now. Let me now. see if I can't get it for you. He's referring to the tower where I left all the foot locks. Oh, I had totally forgotten about that, but I'm sure my characters who just saw them. Yeah, remember. not too long ago, because it wasn't, yeah. You know. I think there was like 12 of them and all that I had on me. Correct. Hey, guys. Oh, never mind. We'll talk about this later. But, um, all right, cool. Yeah, I'm back. Sorry. So, Kevin, what you did, just so you have an idea of where your character's at, since you're popping in the middle here. You, uh, thanks for coming on. Um, the, uh, you came back. Yen Lauren wasn't anywhere to be found. Ren and Brock said, oh, these guys are wounded. We got them out. They're up in the top floor. Uh, they could use some help. And you're like, I, I'll go and do it then. And uh, so you headed on up there to give them a hand and see if you couldn't, you know, administer some first aid in the lake. Before they left, um, you uh, were asked to give some first aid to your allies. You did so. Um, and then they, um, they went off to do their thing while you went off to go and do your thing. Um, ultimately, um, your communication device just started ringing and you're like, what? And then you hear the voice of who called them? Uh, Valette the dick. <laughs> Valette. Um, and, uh, yeah, she, um, basically told you to, uh, head out the way you, uh, came in and, uh, go down the ladder that we were going to go down before and, uh, make, we'll meet you down there. And you said, okay. And these guys are all... I got them to safety. Good deal. And everything's fixed on the transition. So we're cool. good there as well. And then once you made it down here, they're moving towards the lift that the conservators at. They very quickly explained to you that Yen Lauren is dead. They found his corpse. The shard was taken away. And you would have actually have seen somewhere in the middle of that whole thing, your crane beak, the elvish woman that's kind of stuck within it, popped out and said, the shard, you must rescue the shard out of nowhere. I don't know if you caught that scene when it happened. Um, and then uh, you guys are at the lift, and they are opting to go into the lift and head down. Uh, it looks like the agents are trying to break through the door to get into the factory, but you have sealed them away from you. <laughs> okay, awesome. Good deal, I'm caught up. All right, if everyone enters into the lift and descends down, um, I'm just going to go ahead and move us to Theater of the Mind for a bit. No, no, I don't think I'm going to get on the lift. I'm going to stand there and be a huge asshole. Don't don't do it. Look at Yen Lauren. <laughs> A cautionary. Get on the elevator. A cautionary tale. Um. So you descend down the uh, uh, elevator. It seems to be um, not as you anticipated. A box that's descending down. It's just a flat panel that you're standing on that is descending down the chute. It looks like you were at the terminus of it, the top of it, and uh, it kind of, the ceiling above you kind of descends away as you drop down. Mittens, cat, <laughs> you are so bad. Hold on a second, I gotta. I thought that was a baby. Yeah, she is a baby. Um, but anyways, you descend down. Um, as you're descending down, the walls give way um, and you enter into a very open complex. Uh, completely filled with shadows. Um, your little flat platform seems to be bypassing a very large container with a bunch of uh, ocular or uh, uh, circular lenses kind of built into it, and it seems to be completely filled with uh, greenish liquid that's kind of brightly glowing. And there seems to be a wire or a tube or a, a hose. Um, Descending down from it, down, down, down into the shadows. Your, excuse me. Your elevator continues to descend down. You also notice that the ceiling above you appears to be made out of the stonework of the pyramid that you saw, kind of on the outside, and it looks like you're underneath the pyramid itself. As your elevator continues to descend down, your lift continues to descend down. Uh, you also see that there are hundreds, if not thousands, of pillars throughout the darkness. Uh, think Mines of Moria except that uh, a little bit more technological and look. Come here. Come here. Oh, kitty. Get over here. Crying during a dramatic part. 
<laughs> Let go of me! What are you doing, human? I'm putting you in your little crib. You fatty. Alright, so she's she's taken care of. Catnip should put her to shutting up. Um, okay, great. Um, so you descend down and finally land. You are in a very vast open chamber. The uh, cell above you, the wire descending down, and you also notice that there appear to be small bits of green light kind of streaming across the way, leading towards a center area that's kind of lit with uh, brighter colors, but it's just like a fleck of light out in the darkness. What do you do? And like I said, it, directionally, it looks like you could go anywhere. Go ahead with that question. Oh, so we've reached the bottom and this is all that we see. Yeah, and like it looks like there's green light kind of, it looks like the tube has uh, uh, visible points on it and it seems to extend out for some distance. And then there are a bunch of pillars that seem to be holding up the pyramid above you and then um, kind of darkness all about. And you can kind of see that there's some bright light off in the direction that the tube is heading. Mind the gap between the train and the flat. The soul forge rests between two mothers, which rests between two forges, which rests, rests at the base of three stairs, and yada yada. The middle stair, something or other, was like what we got from Gilbert's divination. His augury. I. S Should we go Where towards we the light? That seems like the best choice. Yeah. Or worst, sure. we won't know till we get there, but most promising at least. Okay. As you approach uh, that direction, as it gets closer, you see that there's a very ornate uh, set of uh, materials. Two very large kind of uh, broken bits of stone that kind of rise up as columns um, towards the uh, bottom of the pyramid. Um, settling kind of in between these two uh, broken bits of stone and kind of smoothed out on the sides. Uh, appears to be two statues kind of looming over two very brightly colored orbs. The one that you kind of followed in your direction seems to be, um, the, the green seems to be actually flowing out and away. Um, no, I knew I messed up. Can we go ahead and retcon something real quick? Sure. It was, the liquid wasn't green in the thing in the past. It was yellow. I apologize. I, I knew I messed it up. It is yellow. It's not terribly important. It is for me, but whatever. I ruined it, so it wasn't that important. But the point is, is you see two figures, two statues kind of looming, uh, built into the stone. It looks like they've been carved out of it, kind of chained two pillars um, alongside of this well in the center of the floor. The statue that you kind of approached, and the wires that kind of, or the tube that kind of moves up into that statue, the, the glowing orb in its uh, grasp it appears to be bright yellow, same color as that I should have explained, was the one. Okay, you get the point. Uh, mm -hmm. Liquid seems to be flowing out of the orb at a very slow, kind of dull pace into a pool, which streams then into the center pool. Um, and then another statue kind of uh, arching its back over a blue orb, uh, which is slowly dripping blue liquid into another pool, which then slowly uh, comes into the center pool. The center pool seems to be filled with a greenish liquid, which is the culmination of the two liquids that are mixing within. And it seems that the liquid is lifting up out of the pool um, and kind of entering into the base of this very large green looking pillar that just floats um, above the pool, sapping up the green liquids as it floats there. Etched into the pillar, this arcane looking pillar, is a symbol just jaggedly carved into it. It appears to be some sort of bird. And this is what you're seeing. Yep. Valette. From my. <laughs> yeah, you're having one of those moments where. Yeah, yeah. You and... aren't sure if you're still dreaming or not. And Broxcar may recall that I kind of described this to him. Yeah, you dream. I don't know what should be done, but the only thing I can think of is the meat in the middle. Proxcar. And what happens, happens. Make a research check. Oh. Please, someone... Oh! 
I got taunt them. Well so done. What you see is a soul forge. Apparently, this is where uh, one would cast an undaunted. This is where an undaunted would be made. The liquid to the left um, is basically a spirit essence. Or sorry, the the, the liquid to the right is a, effectively a spirit essence. Light blue or white typically means that it's an untainted soul or an unborn soul. And the yellow to the left is arcane energies that are being pulled from um, uh, other places, uh, specifically the dark winds, but in some cases, um, more appropriately, the white wind um, or the divine wind. Um, these two liquids are basically being merged to create the power source. The green liquid inside is then being converted into vitae, and basically that pillar sitting in front of you is kind of like a mold. It can be opened up, and it can be closed, and it would forge an undaunted within. Valette, if you want her to be reforged out of her current frame and into a new one, um, you would need the materials to create that frame. Looking around, you don't really have much in the way of materials besides what you have with Valette. And the goal is to make her different so she is no longer keyable by the conglomerate, if you recall. With Get in there, Valette. With that information, what would you like to do? Well, he said that we would actually need materials, right, to reforge something. But is, isn't Valette the material itself? Yeah, I think so, but yeah, if we use the same yeah, material, thought, the same mold, we won't be doing this. I thought this we thing. need like a baby soul or something like that, you know. So Brack. do we have any children we can sacrifice? Brack, uh, confused by that statement, you also hear a voice behind you kind of whisper, um, a woman's voice, say, they came here for me too. And you're like, huh? <laughs> you, uh, anyone else hear that? What are you talking about? Okay, who invited the crazy person? Like, seriously. <laughs> There's a... I mean... A, it's, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a woman's voice, but not, not robot lady. It's another also, brother, I think. John, Brack. where's the Russian accent? Senility. <laughs> you didn't have much of one. I have the Russian accent. What it wasn't as about? deep. It wasn't as deep as Ian Lawrence, to be sure. It wasn't as deep as Ian Lawrence. And it cut out a lot bad. more than that. So. <laughs> is that Russian committed? Is you committed to it. I'm not. I can do well. And I'm this not, is it. I got Russian, maybe a little bit French. That's I'm, all. I'm not that committed. I'm not that committed. I'm not that committed. <laughs> and I didn't want to feed you the lines because it's weird that way. But anyways, um, the uh, voice says, Brack, kind of like trying to silence you. And it says, tell Broxgar that the sword, the rainbow sword is necessary. The material that it's made out of, it's required. Uh, 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 dwarf brother. I think, uh, I think, is there, a, is there a lady in this sword? Uh, I think there's a lady in this sword you gave me. Per, uh, it's a, a blonde lady. Yeah, she Very said, uh, she said you need to use a sword as a material in the forge so we can rebuild the lady brother robot lady. Okay, there's not a baby soul in that sword, so I think that statement's ridiculous. She didn't say no soul, she said material. Hear that, brother? This here sword's the material. Plus, a, plus robot lady, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, is there trust a means for me to... You trust the pretty lady in the sword? Yeah, I trust her. If it's her, I think. And I trust Pretty Lady in the Sword, and I hand it to him. Okay. Do I need to melt it down and reforge this some bits? What's happening? Um, you feel like if it was placed inside of the pillar, uh, the materials inside, when it was shut to create the uh, the forge or create the the frame, um, it would do the work for you. All right, but like, hop in. 
Vlet strips off all her belongings. Okay. And uh, enters into the, f- the the forge. As you kind of move over to it, it's floating in the air. It's about five or so feet out, um, and uh, it it's slowly opening to Broxgar. Um, but as you kind of look inside, it doesn't look like it's going to contain Valette's frame. Because she's still in heavy armor. Uh, I will... I'm kidding, I'm if... kidding. that's not why. It, it wouldn't contain you even if you were in your life form. Okay. Take your pants off. <laughs> Out of curiosity, undaunted, are they, like, anatomically correct? Or are you, like, a Ken doll down there? Undaunted don't have um, uh, human organs. human genitalia or re- reproductive organs. That's also huh. the problem. Is whenever I drink things, it doesn't really. There's a pouch in there that I have yeah. to then regurgitate it later. All right. That's so gross. Questions <laughs> answered. Hey, wait. If he goes in there, or she goes in there with that sword, she might come out with like a sword hand or something. She'd be like sword hand. Proxgar, the receptacle. It basically splits open at the center, and it looks like it could fit something in it, almost like a coffin, and it kind of moves towards you, almost like a book being offered to you. Do you place the sword in it? Yeah. Before you do put the whole length of the sword in, it snaps shut on the blade and the blade alone. You are holding the handle, and it segments. It breaks Asafune, which to your understanding was made out of rainbow metal and shouldn't be breakable, out of Aria. It snaps it clean off. The second it does, you look down at the sword hilt, and you see the blade start to grow out like a crystal forming, and slowly extend back to its full length. The forge rescinds back up to over the well, and continues drinking up the uh, vitae beneath it, or the orbo beneath it. The sword reforms to its normal length, but it appears that the uh, forge itself is now doing its work. Looks like we got it powered up. Now we just need to use it. Yeah, but the light won't fit in there. Looking That's... at you did roll a crit. Looking at it, it looks like the soul essence of it comes from the well. Well then. So she gonna need jump in the well? Maybe we need so to put can her head draw in her soul out of his her body, put it in some new made out of rainbow metal. If Brox is yeah. sort of spitballing all the ideas that we're sort of throwing out there, Valette will walk into the, the green part underneath the forge is, is a pool, correct? Correct. Valette enters the pool. Okay. Very shortly after stepping in, you sink like a rock, just thoosh, straight into the water or straight into the liquid. Uh, what you notice though, as you're doing it, is you uh-huh. kind of. You kind of look at everyone as they're arguing, discussing, and you kind of get the feeling. You look over at Judgment laying there on the ground, and you see a spirit kind of come out of it. And you see Hawk, who you've seen once, at least once before, mm-hmm. uh, this very noble-looking individual, start regally walking towards the edge of the well. As you kind of look back at him and step into it and drop in, he kind of looks down at the liquid, and you kind of lose sight of him as you vanish into it. You hear a very calm, cool, collected voice come out to you as you kind of submerge uh, in this fluid. You're reforging yourself. You're purifying yourself. You must know. You must know the truth of the matter. You are not undying. The sword does not make you undying. Nor do I. It is your sin. It is your pride that brings you back and forth. When you pull the essences of others and use them to continue fighting selfishly, you're doing so against the will of myself. You understand what I did when I died, don't you? Have you been told the tale? Have you read the histories? Some, yes. I will tell you it fully. During my travels, friends of ours and myself, specifically me, I can only blame myself. We freed a creature, an ancient evil, from the depths 
the tomb of an old god. When Sorry. It was, when it was freed, it caused great blight on the world. But no one had ever heard this in this world. There were things that were known as the shames of Albacorus, specifically the daughter of the last king of that line. She did great horrors after, specifically upon my lands. But the shame was never released in this world. But it was in the world that I originally came from, or the world that I existed in first. We looked into a mirror that was granted to us by a friend of ours, the one that now resides within the Dream Shard. And we saw glimpses of parallel worlds within that leyline mirror. I understood more fully in this world than in that, and in both, that that shame needed to be destroyed. I also knew that attempting it, um, and more than likely failing it, would mean my death. Even if I succeeded, I would most likely die uh, for the effort. A younger me would have been more prideful. I would have done it for, for glory, for notoriety, for being a hero. And I won't lie, there was part of me that thought that what I was doing would go down in the record books. But it was never recorded. I shunted aside my own pride to make sure the horrors I saw in the world that I existed in would never be wrought upon this world. This sword that you now call judgment, I am not the only essence within it. And you have become a vessel for essences yourself. It feeds upon them. Its pride desires all those that exist to be within itself when you engage it, when you allow it, you are letting sin take over this weapon. You must know that before you purify yourself. That said, as you kind of like hit the bottom and are now kind of laying there flat, uh, kind of feeling Hawk's presence about you, he says, you come to a choice, milady. What you were, what you are, or what you could become. If you had a choice, would you want to be something that you were before? A person you currently know very little about? Would you want to retain yourself as who you are and continue fighting just as you are? Or would you want to become something much greater? Something... Something I could never be in my life, but a very good friend of mine was. Pick three, my lord. Out of character. <laughs> because I don't, like putting, I don't like putting choices that are mechanically based to you that you don't understand. Uh, basically, yeah. what you're currently being asked is the following. If you retain yourself, you stay as a fighter. Uh -huh. As the archetype that you currently are. If you uh -huh. elect to go for um, uh, the choice that he could not become, you become a paladin uh, of the ordeal's oath. If you don't select that option and you go for the last option, then you become a warlock, because that's what you once were. Oh. Do, you oh. wish, do you wish to become what you Shut were? Shut the bard! Do you wish to become oh what you were before you knew what you were? Before you know what you are now? Do you wish to retain yourself as you are? Or do you wish to become something greater? Um. No How does the sin no fit into it no with a paladin? So, out of character note, too, just again, for his, his, I think he understands the mechanical point of the sin portion, right? So, when you're saying this stuff about the sins, it seems like whenever I use judgment, 
Yep. And killing things, it's bad. No, 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 no. Whenever you use okay. judgment to use the ability to get back up, it's bad. That's so using it with other Esper edges seems like it's fine. It's specifically yeah. the those, selfish use for myself. Those powers is... are obviously designated as being a part of the good souls because remember we the linking was already defined. This oh, new... that's with my special resource. Right, the new resource powers were unlocked when you gave it, or when Yen Lauren gave in to Sin. Remember? Okay. At the okay. Gygaxian Key. Right, and You're I did it once or twice already. <laughs> right. So okay. that's knowledge that your character has. Everyone else out of character has that knowledge now, but in yeah. character, you're the only one that knows. Using your specific ability means you're uh -huh. basically giving the sword over to bad. So at this point, and again, it, it's entirely up to you. Do you wish to retain yourself as you are, become what you once were, become something greater than you are currently? And so all that is, it's it's simply a class change, correct? Yep. You're either going Everything to remain the, the class that you are, become a Hexblade Warlock, or become a Oath of, Orde uh, Oath of Ordeals Paladin. Uh, uh, where's Oath of Ordeals? Hedges it's in and Hedges Highways? and Highways, yeah. If you pick it, I'll, I mean, I'll grant it to you. It's fine. I just want to... <sighs> yeah, use mechanics to determine a character <sighs> no, choice. I've... That's what I'm, I'm actually not doing now. Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm purposely not... I don't even know what our deals does. Uh, it's, a, it's a paladin. You know what paladins do. They're paladin. They do paladin roll stuff. Roll a three-sided die. Roll a three-sided die, yeah. Roll a D6. I already play a Hexblade Warlock. I don't... I don't... No, don't play a Warlock. <laughs> we, we don't want to miss you as a fighter type. Um, yeah, man, the last Warlock didn't work out so good anyway. Yeah, he died. Kind of got a crossbow in his face. Oh, real quick, real quick. The greatest part about this, the greatest part about this for me as the DM, just you know, looking at it, if you look at it in stream and you look at the session title, it's really great <laughs> for me. Bad choices. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, what? Well, they're all bad. <laughs> Paladins who swear this oath are usually crusaders or pilgrims who are sworn to achieving a quest such as defeating a church's foe. More than anything, this oath is for paladins who know they will meet, they will be met with dilemmas and challenges that they must rise to meet. <clears throat> I, it's probably not going to be. It's probably not going to be mechanically better than what I am now, especially because I have a battle buddy. But we'll we'll try and be something greater, especially with that thing of the rising challenges to meet. And e all right, good deal. Um, so, as you say, I wish to be stronger. I wish to be greater. Um, your body becomes lightweight. You start floating in the liquid, and you feel your body being ripped apart. Basically, Ouch. like. Someone chucking a uh, Alka Seltzer into um, a, uh, a a bit of water, just fizzle parts, and the metal kind of slumping down to the ground. But you feel yourself rising up out of that place, and uh, you guys watch as the liquid, the green liquid, kind of turns reddish in color, um, kind of pulling from the middle and then exiting out to the sides. That red liquid starts to go up into the forge. Uh, the second that happens, you see the kind of uh, center portion kind of become red in color, and then Judgment flares off the floor and slams into the forge, right into the corrupt symbol. And you watch as the corrupt symbol starts bleeding away, like ink off of um, a piece of paper just bleeding out uh, to the side. Um, a lot of light starts to appear, um, and the liquids to the side that are glowing already become more dull. Um, compared to the forge that glows bright green and red in the center. Eventually, the light dissipates, and you see Valette standing before you. However, and looking at Valette, you notice something very strange. She has skin. She has flesh. You're a real boy now. She has real blonde hair. But what you recognize, Let, as you take yourself to stand up in front of them, is that you're exactly the same. But you're better. 
you breathe in. You can feel breath. You can kind of feel like a taste in the air as well. A bit of acrid uh, taste to the air, but you can feel it. You don't need to eat or sleep, but you can. You start looking around and you see the world in your normal eyes, but different. You kind of blink a bit and you feel like there's a wetness to your eyelids. And then you kind of rub around the side of your face and you feel these grooves along the outside of your face. And you feel like you could peel your face clean off. Put another face on if you needed to. And you know exactly where those are. Feels like you've been upgraded. Reforged. Crafted as new. Look the same. But you feel like a lot of the things that are present could be very quickly changed just the way they were. Um, but you do also feel that... Um, you're able to sense things like you weren't able to before. Um, you also start looking around and realize that you can see in a different sight as you shift into the divine sense and start looking about. Seeing. Ignore the black halo around Sam. Ignore the black halo around <laughs> Seeing a brightly red colored dwarf figure standing near Broxgar. Seeing a bright white elvish woman standing near Gilbert. Seeing Sayre, light, blonde, and glowing radiant, standing next to Brock as he's handed back the uh, reforging sword. You see a very grizzled and kind of uh, golden-colored uh, brigand, really, um, standing next to Sam. And, of course, uh, you see a um, Sayre Eugen man uh, in kind of a bluish color. Standing next to Ren, or reddish color rather, standing next to Ren. Switch Broxgar's color with uh, Ren's color. Sorry, mm -hmm. I did it wrong. But uh, yeah, you also see Hawk standing there as the sword kind of comes down off of the forge with you, and you pull it to your side. You're wearing nothing. She does appear to have um, everything a woman would have. <laughs> um, Dear gosh, she's even got. Hair coming out of her nostrils. <laughs> well played. Um, Brack, to you, the woman looks very similar to the woman you saw uh, in the sword. So you're kind of like <laughs> uh, making whatever conclusions you want to make there. Um, but if you return to your stuff, Follett, and start gathering your things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Now, mechanically, we'll have some discussions, um, obviously, okay. regarding that. The session was going to be a short session. I'm glad that, um, uh, Kevin, you were able to get back on. Uh, but the goal was to kind of basically do the same NPC Gilbert step-to-step to here-to-here. -step to -here. Um, obviously, we have a bit that we need to do mechanically with um, Tim. Um, so the session will more than likely end here momentarily. Um, but, uh, yeah. Any questions for me uh, on air uh, before we move on? Just if you have any questions for me, it's just the DM before I cut the, the stream. Uh, the location that we're in with the Soul Forge, is it a place that we need to barricade? Is it, or, are we it's like completely major... wide open and barricading this would be impossible. I don't think we can take a long rest here is what he's saying. <clears throat> Doesn't sound like it. I'll tell you what. If, if you, you want to, to try and spend, it, it does appear safe though. Nobody's present, so if you want to try and get a short rest out of the way, you could try. If that's your goal. Any other questions though? Besides that, because we'll discuss that a bit more too, before the beginning of the next session. Did you guys see uh, magic half plate upstairs? Because I thought I caught part of that on mithril half plate. Yeah. yeah, I got it. Sweet. I have I it. Actually use half plate. And if you guys want to identify things, that's also a, a fine bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's rings. Okay. To... So we'll handle that off stream since there's no questions that are pertinent uh, off the top of your heads. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream. Thanks for watching. Um, and next session, we'll be, um, uh, restart, or we'll be starting up with uh, uh, Valette, the Redeemed. <laughs> Thank hey, you. Yum. Here we go. Stop the stream. <laughs>